In the history of mankind, there are not many peoples with the imperial mindset. And among them, next to the Persians, Greeks, and Romans, one can name the Turks. The ancestors of the Huns lived in northern China, in Inner Mongolia, and the Tungus, the ancestors of modern Mongols, lived to the northeast up to Korea. They had the same way of life. They were nomads, so they raised horses, sheep, cows, and lived in felt yurts. Their worldview was the worship of the sky and the sun. Their supreme god was Tengri. The root language of the Turks and Tungus was probably close. The Huns spoke agglutive language of the Turkic language family. According to the latest genetic research of the Russian YouTube channel Archaeology History Genetic Research 2021, the Turkic language and, accordingly, the Turkic people were formed in the 3rd century BC, along with the creation of the Hunnic Nomadic Empire, which means that the history of the Turks starts almost 800 years earlier, and not in the 6th century as it was previously thought. The separation of the Proto-Turks and the Proto-Tungus from the Kalman Altaic language family in northern China probably occurred as far back as in the 6th millennium BC. The Huns in northeast China constantly fought with the Indo-European peoples, Aryans, Tokcharians, and Yuji, who spoke inflected languages of the Indo-European language family and mixed with them. The ancestral home of the Indo-European peoples is Altai, southern Siberia from which they, during the 2nd and 3rd millennia BC, migrated throughout Eurasia. The result of assimilation is that the Turks have R1A haplogroup of Y chromosomes transmitted through the Indo-European male line and R1B of North Eurasian group, ancient Aryans, belonging to the peoples of Eastern and Western Europe. According to Chinese sources, in the 27th century BC, the first Chinese emperor Huangdi fought with the Xin nomads. The ancestors of the Huns later began to call them Yan On, Kun, Gun, and at the end of the 3rd century BC, Hien Nu. There are Chinese chronicles, Book of History, about wars with nomadic barbarians around 2500 BC. Chinese chronicles indicate that in 1818 BC, a descendant of the ruler of the imperial Xi dynasty fled to the north and took refuge with the Huns. Chinese sources indicate wars with nomads in the period from 1400 BC to 200 BC. The sources indicate diplomatic contacts and conflicts of nomads with China in 1138, 1127, 714, and 689 BC. In the memoirs of Mencius, a follower of Confucius, 372 to 289 BC, Chinese history dating back to 828 BC is dated annually, and the Huns are constantly mentioned there. The history of the ancestors of Turks, the Proto-Turks, dates back 4,700 years. In the 4th century BC, the Huns created a tribal union of 24 Hunnic tribes. In 225 BC, Duman became the emperor of the Huns, whom the Chinese called Shan Yu, and the Huns called Tengri, Kutujan Iye which in Turkic meant messenger of heaven. In 210 BC, Duman's son, Bahadur, became the Kagan of the Huns. According to Chinese sources, Mod, Bahadur was one of the great conquerors in world history and can rightly be called the Turkic Hannibal. He conquered southern territories from China and created a huge nomadic empire from the Pacific Ocean to modern Turkestan. China wavered under the onslaught of the Huns and paid tribute annually, 
opening barter trade on the border profitable for the Huns. The number of Huns ranged from 1.5 to 2 million people. The Huns could field an army of up to 300,000 people. Bahadur reigned until 173 BC for almost 37 years. To protect the country from the Huns, China built the Great Wall of China, which became the line of a thousand-year confrontation and struggle between the Turks and the Chinese, along which millions of human lives were laid. In 48 AD, the Hunnic Khaganate split. Eight southern clans decided to separate, probably under the influence of Chinese diplomacy. They elected a new Khagan and created their own southern Khaganate, which was a vassal state of China and began to fight with the Northern Huns. Having existed for more than 300 years, the Northern Hunnic Khaganate collapsed in 165. After the collapse, some of the Huns remained in China. Some of the Huns went to the territory of Kazakhstan. Some of the Huns went to the Volga River, where 200 years later, they would shake the whole world. In 215 AD, China annexed the Southern Khaganate. In 370, the Huns living on the Volga began to attack the Black Sea steppes where the Germanic Gothic tribes lived. The Goths were defeated. Some of them submitted to the Huns, and some of them went to the Roman Empire. In 395, the Huns invaded the Eastern Roman Empire and then Asia Minor through the Caucasus. They defeated the Romans and invaded Syria. In 422, the Huns invaded Pannonia, Hungary, and reached the Rhine River. In 434, Attila, the son of Rua, became Khagan of the Huns. In 437, Attila conquered the German kingdom of the Burgundians. In 441 and 447, Attila invaded the Roman Empire in the Balkans, an empire Theodosius was forced to make peace on harsh terms with the payment of an annual tribute. In 451, Attila began a war with the Western Roman Empire. Attila invaded Gaul, now modern France. In June 451, the battle took place on the Catalanian fields. This was the largest battle in human history. The losses were huge on both sides. East German tribes fought on the side of the Huns. West German and Gallic tribes fought on the side of the Romans. There were no winners in the battle. In 452, Attila crossed the Alps and invaded Italy, capturing the north of the country. The Huns approached Rome. Rome was in panic. The empire sued for peace. Emperor Valentinian sent the embassy headed by Pope Leo I to Attila. Attila accepted the embassy. The Pope asked to spare Rome, a city with world culture, on behalf of all Christianity, with the payment of tribute on any terms. Attila and Pope Leo I found a common language. Attila told the Pope that he was the wisest man in the world, and at the end of the meeting, they hugged. Attila spared Rome, thus diplomacy saved Rome. Pope Leo I was canonized by the church and became a saint. In the ancient German ballad, Nibelungen Saga, Attila is glorified under the name Etzel. In 453, Attila died unexpectedly and his empire began to disintegrate. Attila was a great statesman and commander and went down in world history. In 552, the Ashina clan united the Turkic clans, creating a new state. The Turks developed production of iron, made weapons and armor, and created well-armed cavalry. The worldview of the Turks, like their ancestors, the Huns, was Tengrinism, the veneration of the god Tengri. Bumin became the first Kagan, and a year later, his son Mugan became Kagan. In 565, the Turks defeated the Persians and captured Sagdania. In 576, a war began with the Avar Kaganat in the west. The Turks reached Crimea and captured the northern Caucasus. 
In 578, the invasion of China began. China was defeated and was forced to pay tribute to the Turks. By 580, a huge empire from the Pacific Ocean to the North Caucasus had been created. In 600, the Khaganate was divided into the Eastern and Western Khaganate. In 630, the Eastern Khaganate suffered an unexpected defeat from China and lost its independence. In 604, Tun Jabgu Khan became the Khan of the Western Khaganate, with his headquarters in the city of Chach, Tashkent. In 626, he started a war with Iran. In 628, he took Tbilisi, Tiflis, by storm. In 631, Tun Jabgu Khan died, and unrest began in the Khaganate. Taking advantage of the weakening of the Khaganate, China began a war with it. The Turks were defeated and fell into vassal dependence on China. In 679, the Turks of the Eastern Khaganate rebelled against China. They said, We were a powerful, imperial people. Where is our power? In 693, a war with China began. The Turks defeated the Chinese in northern China, and in 703, the Tang Empire concluded peace with the Turks. In 726, Bilge Khan became the Khagan of the second Turkic Khaganate, who, together with his brother Kul Tegin and advisor Ton Yuk Yuk, began to revive the Khaganate, which lasted until 744. <laughs> After the collapse of the second Turkic Khaganate, the Uyghurs came to power. It was a union of Turkic Oguz tribes who created a new state, the Uyghur Khaganate. The first Khagan was Kutlug Bilge Khan, who restored the capital in Karakorum. In 745, his son Moyan Chaur came to power and united the Turkic tribes of Basmals, Karluks, and Turgeshes by force creating a huge state from Manchuria to the Black Irtish. The ruling clan was the Uyghur clan, Yaglik Kar. In 755, a civil war began in China. The rebels inflicted a number of defeats on government troops. The emperor of the Tang dynasty turned to Khagan Moyanchur for help in suppressing the uprising. Moyanchur sent troops into China and defeated the rebels. The civil war in China lasted 10 years. Due to wars and epidemics, the population of China decreased from 52 to 17 million people by almost 35 million people. The Uyghurs began to receive an annual tribute from China in the amount of 20,000 pieces of silk per year, and the country flourished. The Uyghurs had their own written language, the Uyghur alphabet. In 840, a coup took place in the Khaganate. Internal unrest began, the Kyrgyz invaded the country, and the Khaganate collapsed. The state was created by the Turkic Avars in 562, who did not recognize the power of the great Turkic Khaganate. The Avars fought to the west, conquered the German state of the Gelids and the Slavic tribes, and settled in the middle of the Danube and Hungary. Bayan became the first Avar Kagan. In a short time, the Avars created a huge empire, which included the territories of modern Hungary, Austria, Serbia, Macedonia, Croatia, Romania, and Ukraine. Since 582, the Avars were in war with Byzantium. In 788, the French Avar War began, which went on with varying success. In 791, the campaign against the Avars was led by King Charlemagne. In 796, the Franks captured the Avar capital, along with the treasures accumulated over the centuries. The Avars were defeated by the Franks and resisted until 803. In 651, 
Turun Khan from the Turkic dynasty of Ashina created the Khazar state. The capital was the city of Khan Baylik on the Itil or Volga river. The Khaganat occupied the territory from the Black Sea in the west to the territory of modern Kazakhstan. In 652, a war began with the Arab Caliphate, which lasted almost 150 years. The border of the military operations was Derbent in the Caucasus. The war went on with varying success. The Khazars stopped the expansion of the Arabs into Eastern Europe. In 790, the Turkic elite adopted Judaism. In 985, Kiev Prince Sviatoslav entered into an alliance with the Pechineg and Oguz Turks, attacked the Khazars, and defeated them. It was the end of the Ashina Turkic dynasty, which lasted for more than 400 years. <laughs> After the collapse of the Uyghur Khaganat in 840, the Turkic tribes of the Turgesh and Karluks in Semirece and Kashgaria created a new state of the Karakhanids. The first Khan was Bilge Kul Qadir Khan. In 940, Khan Satuk Bograhan made Islam the official religion of the state. In 990, the Karakhanids began a war with the Iranian Samanids whom they defeated in 999. The Turks captured Bukhara and Samarkand. The state began to expand. In the west, the border moved to the Amu Darya River. In the east, the Irtish River. In 1069, the famous book Kutadgu Bilik, The Science of How to Become Happy, in Mahmud Kashgari's book about the Turkic language, Divan Lugat at Turk, were published. One of the religious movements of Islam that originated in the Khaganat was Sufism, which was closer to the worldview of the Tengri Turks, where the human soul and God are one whole. The founder of Sufism was Hoya Ahmed Yasawi, born in 1103 in Bukhara, in whose honor the great conqueror Timur built a mausoleum in the city of Turkestan. In 1042, the Khaganat was divided into Western and Eastern, which disintegrated in 1210 and in 1212, respectively. In 962, the Turkic commander Alptegin, who served in the Samanid state, fell into disgrace and went to the city of Ghazna, modern Afghanistan, creating a new state. In 977, Alptegin's son-in-law, Sebuktegin, sat on the throne. Sebuktegin began to make campaigns in northern India, defeated the troops of Indian princes, and captured the territory of northern India. In 998, his son Mahmud became the Ghaznavid Sultan, who turned out to be a talented statesman and commander. Under the blows of the Ghaznavid Turks, the Samanid state in Central Asia ceased to exist. In 1000, Mahmud of Ghazni began his conquest of India, and in 1009, the country was conquered as far as the Indus River. By 1025, Sultan Mahmud had created a huge empire, from Iraq and the Caspian Sea in the west to the Ganges River in India, from the Aral Sea in the north to the Indian Ocean in the south. The official language was Persian, but the government and army were Turkic. Sultan Mahmud paid great attention to science and culture. He founded the first university in Ghazni, where he invited prominent figures of the East, Al-Biruni, Ferdowsi, and others. In 1030, Sultan Mahmud died, and his son Masud took the throne. Continuous wars with the Seljuk Turks weakened the Ghaznavids, and in 1192, the empire ceased to exist. In 996, Mamun ibn Muhammad united northern and southern Khorezm into a single state with its capital in the city of Urgench. Khorezm was a country with a high culture of agriculture, 
a system of irrigation canals and dams. Khorezm fought wars with the Ghaznavids and Seljuks and became dependent on them. In 1057, Khorezm Shah Atish achieved it. In 1172, Tekesh became Khorezm Shah and began to expand the state. The Khorezm Shah's army consisted of nomadic Turks. In 1194, Tekesh captured eastern Iran, the cities of Ray and Merv. In 1200, his son Muhammad became Khwarezm Shah, who continued his father's conquests. In 1217, a huge empire was created. Iran, Iraq, and Azerbaijan were conquered. The empire extended from the Indian Ocean in the south to the Aral Sea in the north, from Iraq in the west to Lake Balkhash in the east. In 1219, a war began with Genghis Khan, who conquered Khorezm, took Urgench in 1220, the Khorezm Shah fled the country and soon died. In the 10th century, the migration of the Oghuz Turks from the territory of Kazakhstan to the south began. They called themselves Seljuks, by the name of Seljuk. In 1040, they created their own state in Iran with its capital in the city of Khorasan. In 1055, Seljuk's grandson Togrul captured Baghdad. In 1057, the Baghdad Caliph or awarded him the title of Kayoa of the East and West. In 1063, Alp Arslan became the Sultan. In 1064, he conquered Georgia and approached the borders of the Byzantine Empire. In 1071, a battle took place between the Seljuks and the Byzantines at Manzikert in Asia Minor. The Byzantines were defeated, the emperor himself was captured, and the mass resettlement of Oguzes to Asia Minor began. In 1072, Melik Shah became the sultan and conquered Syria, Palestine, as well as Arabia, with the cities of Mecca and Medina. Malik Shah created a huge empire in the west, from the Mediterranean and Red Seas in the west to Lake Issacool in the east, and from the Aral Sea in the north to the Indian Ocean in the south. Much attention was paid to science. Shiraz and Isfahan had astronomical observatories and libraries. In 1092, Malik Shah died. The empire began to disintegrate and disintegrated in 1195. In 1075, Seljuk's great-grandson Suleiman united the nomadic Oguzes and created a new state in Asia Minor with its capital in the city of Iznik, Nicaea, and waged wars with the Byzantine Empire. In 1096, the Crusaders invaded Asia Minor. In 1087, the Seljuks were defeated at the Battle of Eskisehir. But later, in 1100 and 1101, at Malatya, Amasya, and Eregli, Sultan Kilik Arslan defeated three armies of the Crusaders. In 1147, the Second Crusade began. On October 25, 1147, Sultan Mesud defeated the army of the German Emperor Conrad. The second army of the French Emperor Louis also suffered heavy losses. In 1046 and 1155, the Seljuks won battles over the Byzantines and expanded the territory of the state. In 1260, the Seljuks were defeated by the Persian Ilkhans and became their vassals. In 1318, Sultan Kilic Arslan V died, thus ending the Seljuk dynasty of the victorious crusaders. In 1095, Pope Urban II called for the release of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. In 1096, the crusaders started the invasion of Asia Minor. The Seljuks of the Rum Sultanate were the first to take the blow. In 1097, the Turks were defeated by the Crusaders near Eskisehir. 
In 1098, the Crusaders stormed Jerusalem and created the Kingdom of Jerusalem. In 1000 and 1001, in the battles of Malatya, Amasya, and Iregli, the Seljuk Turks defeated three armies of the Crusaders. In 1147, Pope Eugene II proclaimed the Second Crusade. In 1147, the German and then the French Crusader armies were defeated in the battles at Esquesehir and the Menderes River. In 1189, the Third Crusade started. The campaign was led by the German Emperor Frederick Barbarossa. The Crusaders arrived in Constantinople and then began to advance overland to Jerusalem. The army of the German Emperor was attacked by the Seljuk Turks and suffered heavy losses. Upon arrival in Syria, Frederick Barbarossa accidentally drowned in the river while swimming. The Third Crusade ended ingloriously. In fact, the Turks destroyed the best warriors of the European chivalry and protected Muslim civilization from Christian genocide. For centuries, Egyptian sultans recruited Mamluk warriors from the Turks. In 1250, the Mamluks overthrew the Ayyubid dynasty and made Mamluk Aybek a sultan, and the Mamluk ruling in Egypt began. In 1258, Genghis Khan's grandson, Hulagu, captured Baghdad. His commander from the Turkic Naiman Ketbuga conquered Syria. The threat of invasion arose over Egypt. Sultan Qutuz set out with the Mamluks to meet Ketbuga. On September 8, 1260, a battle took place in Ain Jalut. The Mamluks won. In 1260, the famous Baybars became the Sultan. He began the liberation of Muslim lands captured by the Crusaders. In 1291, Sultan Khalun expelled the Crusaders. The Mamluks united Egypt and Syria into one state. Egypt, under the rule of the Mamluk Turks, flourished for two centuries. In 1486, a war began with the Ottoman Turks, which lasted for several years. In 1517, the Mamluks were defeated in the battle at Cairo. In 1521, Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent included Egypt in the Ottoman Empire. By the end of the 12th century, the future great conqueror, great strategist, and genius of war, Temujin began to unite the Turkic and mixed Turkic Tungus tribes into a single state. In 1204, he defeated the Naimans. In 1206, the nomadic tribes of the Tatars, Jailars, Naimans, and Kerets raised Temujin on a white felt, according to Turkic traditions, and declared him Supreme Khan, giving him a new name, Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan was from the Turkic Kiat clan. The Kiat clan now lives in the south of Kazakhstan. Genghis Khan created a strong army. In 1211, a war with China began. In 1215, Genghis Khan took Beijing. In the same year, a peace treaty was signed with China. In 1221, the Khwarezm Empire was defeated. In 1221, Genghis Khan led a campaign to Iran and reached northern India. The worldview of the nomads was Tengrism. The people had to live according to the laws of Yasa, a set of ancient civil and everyday customs of nomads. The writing was Uyghur, or Old Naiman. The official language was the Turkic language. In 1227, Genghis Khan died, leaving the empire to his four sons. At the Kurultai of 1229, a decision was made on new conquests. Genghis Khan bequeathed to Yochi's elder sons the lands west of the Irtish River. The campaign to the west was led by Yochi's son, Batu. In 1236, Volga, Bulgaria was conquered. 
Then they moved to the Black Sea steppes, the lands of the Kipchak Turks and Russian principalities. The Kipchaks were defeated. The Russian cities of Ryazan and Chernigov were captured, and Kiev was captured in 1240. In 1241, Batuhan captured Hungary, the Czech lands, Bohemia, and moved to the Adriatic Sea. On April 9, 1241, the Polish-German army was destroyed in the Battle of Lignitz, and on April 11th, the army of Hungarians and Croats died in the Battle of Shailot. Europe was shocked. Batu Khan decided to return to his homeland. In 1243, Batu founded a state on the Volga River with the headquarters in the city of Sarai. The state extended from the Danube River in the west to the Irtysh River in the east. The Russian principalities were vassals and paid tribute. In 1269, the Golden Horde became an independent state. Until 1342, the country flourished. Then a struggle for power began between the Khans. The system of power was destroyed, and the country was degraded. In the 15th century, the disintegration into separate states began. In 1426, the Crimean Khaganat. In 1438, the Kazan Khaganat. In 1459, the Astrakhan Khaganat. In 1465, the Kazakh Khaganat and in 1480, the Moscow Principality were formed. In 1264, Genghis Khan's grandson, Kublai Khan, became Great Khan and moved the capital from Karakarum to Beijing. In 1273, Kublai Khan began a war with southern China with the Song Dynasty. In 1279, all territory of China was conquered. Then Vietnam, Cambodia, Burma, Manchuria, Korea, and Tibet. In 1274, he sent a large naval fleet to invade Japan, but a sea storm scattered the ships and the campaign ended in failure. In 1280, Kublai created a new Yuan dynasty. Kublai created a huge empire, According to the recollections of the Venetian traveler Marco Polo, the official language of the empire was the Turkic language. Later, the empire weakened. In 1368, the Chinese people overthrew the Turkic Yuan dynasty, and Emperor Togon Temir fled the country. <laughs> In 1258, Genghis Khan's grandson, Hulagu, led a campaign against Baghdad and took it by storm. The Baghdad Caliphate was conquered, and the treasures of the Abbasid dynasty that ruled for over 500 years were captured. Attempts to conquer Syria and Palestine were unsuccessful due to defeat by the Egyptian Mamluk Turks at the Battle of Ain Jalut in 1260. Hulagu created a new state, including northwestern Iran and Azerbaijan, with its capital in the city of Tabriz. In 1340, the state collapsed. <laughs> Genghis Khan's son, Chagatai, inherited the lands southeast of Lake Balkhash, Semiriche, and Mavarahanar. The interfluv between the Amu Darya and Sur Darya within the cities of Samarkand and Bukhara. In the 14th century, the Ulus was divided into the western and eastern Ulus of Mogolistan. The Turks were called Mughals. The nomadic population was Turkic. The largest clan was the Dulat clan. By the end of the 15th century, the state collapsed. <laughs> The great conqueror Timur from the Turkic family of Barlas was born in 1336 in the city of Kesh, Shahrizyab. In 1370, he captured the city of Balkh in Afghanistan and became its ruler. In 1386, he stormed Tiflis, Tbilisi, Tabriz, and Isfahan in Iran. 
In 1389, Timur made a campaign in Mongolistan, completely ruining the country. In 1391, Timur started a campaign against the golden horde Khan Tokhtamush, reached the Volga River, and defeated him. In 1392, Timur began a campaign in Iran, capturing cities, he captured Baghdad. And in 1395, he started a new war with Tokhtamish, in which he won. In 1398, Timur began his campaign in India, defeated the Turkic ruler of Delhi, Sultan Mahmud, captured a huge war trophy, and returned to Samarkand. In 1400, Timur began his campaign in Syria and took Aleppo and Damascus by storm. In 1402, there was a battle with the Turkish Sultan Bayezet near Ankara. The Turks were defeated. Sultan Bayezet was captured. Timur created a huge empire, including Central Asia, Iran, Afghanistan, Armenia, and Georgia. In 1405, Timur began a campaign in China. He died during the campaign. After Timur's death, the empire began to disintegrate. It is interesting to note that among Slavic peoples, the so-called step Y chromosome, R1A, ranges from 50 to 70%. The ancestors of the Slavs came from Altai to Europe in the 2nd to 3rd millennium BC. In the Baikal region, Malta site, archaeologists found the remains of a boy who lived 24,000 years ago. His genetic analysis showed that he was a carrier of the haplogroup R, the ancestor of the haplogroups R1a and R1b of the Eastern European and Western European haplogroups of the male Y chromosome, which confirms the hypothesis that the ancestral homeland of the ancient Aryans, Indo-Europeans, is Altai, southern Siberia. In 370, the Huns began the invasion of the Black Sea steppes and moved further to the Roman Empire. They conquered the Germanic tribes of the Goths, Gepids, and Burgundians. Slavic tribes, previously squeezed from the south and west by Germanic tribes, began to move to free territories in the Balkans and southeastern Europe in the 6th and 7th centuries. This process especially intensified under the Avar Khaganat. The Slavs were vassals of the Avar Turks and participated in wars on the side of the Avars. The Avars began to resettle the Slavs to the lands liberated from the Romans and Germans. Thanks to the Avars, the first Slavic states were created in the second half of the first millennium. According to Russian historians, in the 13th century, on the territory of the Russian principalities that paid tribute to the Golden Horde Huns, the state language was Tatar, Kipchak language. The second state language was the Old Russian language. The Moscow Principality, in the 13th to 14th centuries, was an ulus of the Golden Horde, regularly paying tribute to the Horde. The princes received a label to rule in the Horde. During the period from 1223 to 1502, more than 152 armed clashes between the Russian and Horde troops were recorded. Russian principalities were subjected to Horde invasions more than 100 times and were the defending side. Unfortunately, most of the documents of the Horde rule of the 13th to 14th centuries in Rus were destroyed, especially in the 18th century when Russia was making its way to Europe, abandoning its Asian past. The almost 250-year rule of the Turkic Tatars had a great influence on the formation of the future Russian state and empire. The Moscow Principality was an ulus of the Golden Horde. The Russian state was the legacy of the Golden Horde, built on the basis of the statehood of the Golden Horde. According to the Russian historian Fedotov, after the collapse of the Golden Horde, the Horde headquarters from Sarai moved to the Kremlin. According to Russian historian Yuri Selyaznev, during the reign of the Golden Horde, 14 Russian princes were executed for violating the laws of the Golden Horde. The academic Nikolai Baskakov, in his book Russian Surnames of Turkic Origin, published in 2012, 
describes over 300 prominent representatives of the Russian nobility who were of Turkic origin. This list includes such famous people as Kutuzov, Ushakov, Turgenev, Yusupov, Urusov, Karamzin, and others. Some historians indicate that more than 500 noble families are of Turkic origin, and about 40 to 50 percent of Russian nobles were of Turkic origin. It should be noted that Russia paid tribute to the Crimean Khaganate until 1700. Historians have not yet given an objective assessment of the role of the Turks in the history of Russia. The interaction and cultural influence of the Turkic and Slavic civilizations over thousands of years, Huns, Avars, Hazars, Pechenegs, Kipchaks, Tatars, and others, have not been studied. Babur was the great-grandson of Timur, born in 1483. After Timur's death, the empire began to disintegrate due to internecine wars. In 1504, Babur captured Kabul and subjugated the local tribes. In 1519, Babur started his campaigns in India and captured part of the territory of India. In 1525, Babur made his fifth campaign in India. In 1526, at the Battle of Panipat, Babur defeated the Delhi Sultan Ibrahim and captured the cities of Delhi and Agra. In 1527, in the battle with the Rajputs of India, Babur gained the victory. In 1529, Babur defeated the Pashtun army and conquered all territory of northern India, becoming the founder of the Mughal Empire. The Turks were called Mughals at that time. The era of Mughal rule in India became the heyday of Indo-Muslim culture. In 1530, Babur died. His descendants expanded the empire, conquering all of India, especially under Aurangzeb. At that time, the famous Taj Mahal mausoleum was built. In 1707, Aurangzeb died and the empire began to disintegrate. In 1805, the British captured Delhi and the colonization of India began. In September 1858, the British announced the liquidation of the Mughal Empire. In 1877, Queen Victoria got the title of Empress of India. It was the end of the dynasty of great conquerors, descendants of great Timur. The ancestors of the Kazakhs are the Huns, Turks, and nomads of the empire of Genghis Khan. The Kazakh people were formed in the mid-15th century. Y chromosome haplogroups O and C, northern China, characteristic of the Turks, comprise about 50% of the Kazakhs. The ancestors of the Kazakhs are also the Scythians, Sarmatians, Saks, and Masagets, belonging to the Indo-European language family. Among modern Kazakhs, the North Eurasian haplogroup of the Y chromosome, R1A and R1B, is up to 25%. The remaining 25% are made up of other haplogroups, including haplogroup G1. The ethnogenesis of modern Kazakhs occurred mainly from the merger of two races, the Turkic mongoloid haplogroup O and C and the Caucasoid haplogroup R1A and R1B, as well as the southern Caucasoid race haplogroup G1. It is interesting that in the Kazakh clan Argin, the number of Argins in Kazakhstan is about 3 million people, Almost half of the Kazakh men have the Y chromosome haplogroup G1, characteristic of the peoples of northern Iran and Ashkenazi Jews, Semitic element. It starts from Jerusalem to northern Iran. In the 14th century, the Argins began to move from the territory of northern Iran to the territory of Central Asia and Kazakhstan. They were Turkicized, Iranian-speaking, semi-nomadic tribes. The Argins settled into the Crimea, the Northern Caucasus, the Golden Horde participated in the creation of the first Kazakh Khaganate under the leadership 
of the Genghis Seed clans Janabek and Kerei and formed the basis of the Kazakh Khaganate. It also included the clans of Naiman, Kerei, Kanyarat, Ralayir, and others. Kazakh educators Abaye Kunanbayev, Shakarim Kudayberdev, People's Hero Mamai, were from the Argin Tobekte clan. According to modern genetic studies of the gene pool, the population of Central Asia, including the Kazakh people, is characterized by a heterogeneous mixture of populations of the Middle East, Europe, as well as South, East, and North Asia. In the 13th century, the Oguz clan of Kai migrated from Central Asia to Anatolia, Asia Minor, led by Ertagrul, into the possessions of the Seljuk Sultan. His son Osman gave the name to the nations of the Turks and began to expand the possessions of the Ottomans. Sultan Bayezet conquered Sultan Bayezet conquered Bulgaria, Serbia, Macedonia, and Greece, and was defeated by Timur at the Battle of Ankara in 1402, which stopped the Ottoman Turks from invading Europe for 50 years. In 1453, Sultan Mehmed took Constantinople by storm and made it his capital, renaming it into Istanbul. The Ottomans took over government administration and the organization of the army from the Seljuks. In 1512, Sultan Selim conquered Syria, Palestine, Egypt, and Armenia. In 1520, Suleiman the Magnificent became Sultan and conquered the countries of northern Africa, Algeria, and Tunisia. During the reign of Suleiman the Magnificent, the empire ruled over vast territories in Asia, Africa, and Europe. Istanbul became one of the most beautiful cities in the world. After the peak of the empire's power in the 17th century, a decline began. In the 17th century, in the war with Austria, Turkey lost Hungary and Transylvania. And in the 18th century, in wars with Russia, it lost Crimea and part of Ukraine. In 1828, Greece gained independence. In 1878, Serbia, Montenegro, and Bulgaria gained independence. In 1914, Turkey took part in World War I on the side of Germany and was defeated, losing all its possessions in Asia, Europe, and Africa. The country was occupied by the intent countries, the Turkish people, led by Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, expelled the invaders. In 1922, the Grand National Assembly decided to liquidate the Ottoman Empire and create a new Turkish state. Over a period of two millennia, several dozens of Turkic empires and states existed. The Turks seized the thrones of three continents in Beijing, Delhi, Isfahan, Damascus, Baghdad, Cairo, Constantinople. It should be noted that in the conquered lands, unprecedented prosperity was most often observed. The Turks built libraries, universities, and astronomical observatories. This period includes the 400-year rule of the Turks in China, the grandson of Genghis Khan, Kublai Khan, united China into a single state in the 13th century. The name of Genghis Khan is sacred in China. The Chinese remember and honor Genghis Khan. 900 years of rule of the Turks in India. The grandchildren of Timur in the 16th century united India into a single state. Indians are still grateful to the Turks' Mughals. 900 years of rule of the Turks in Iran. 600 years of rule in the Middle East and Egypt, 250 years of rule of the Turks, Tatars in Rus. The Turkic ethnos, the Turkic language was formed in the 3rd century BC when the great empire of the Huns appeared, according to the theory of ethnogenesis of the Russian historian Lev Gumilyov. At that time, the passionate rise of the Turkic ethnos, the great Turkic civilization began 
which lasted until the 17th century, almost two millennia. According to the Russian historian Lev Gumilyov, the Turks are one of the super ethnic groups of world history that left a deep mark on world history. 